Good evening. Welcome to Sunday Night Devotional from here at the Salem Creek Church of Christ. We are honored to have you viewing this video at the close of this uh, Lord's Day. I hope your day has been a blessed day and that you've had the opportunity to uh, worship God with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, that was something that was a very uh, great part of my day today, twice here at uh, Salem Creek. I want to invite you to come worship with us anytime you might have the opportunity if you were looking for a church to call home. Come check us out. We're located at 2525 Salem Creek Drive here in Murfreesboro. And if there's any way that we can assist you, give us a call. Pick up the telephone. Call us. Our telephone number is area code 615-893-7532. I want to uh, continue to tell you about this. I think it's a, a good thing. We're producing it here on a quarterly basis. It is our daily devotional guide this year it's called Ancient Words. We're going through the Bible and looking at God's ancient word. There is a devotional for five days out of every week, uh, Monday through Friday. If you'd like to have a copy of that, uh, give us a call. We'll get it to you free of charge. If we have to mail it, I'll take care of the postage myself. If you want a copy, we'd love for you to have one. Uh, just give us a call here, area code 615-893-7532. Well, we're going to continue our thoughts today in the book of Exodus. And let me say this before we begin our thoughts for this evening. I know there are sometimes it may be tempting to read all of these things we see back in that first covenant and ask the question, well, what does that have to do with me? I want us to see that there are some things to consider here much deeper than just what's on the surface there in God's covenant with ancient Israel. His people today are under a different covenant. Our covenant with God is found in the New Testament. It is sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. But in this old covenant that he made with Israel a long time ago, which has been taken out of the way, there are many eternal truths that are illustrated, and, and those certainly have relevance for our lives today. And as we think in a devotional setting this evening about how we can be closer to God and grow in our relationship with Him, I think the things that we'll talk about tonight can really help us do that very thing. After God's covenant with Israel had been sealed, Moses was called up on the mountain, and he was up there for a lengthy time. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights, and... God would hand him the two tablets of stone written with his hand. They contained the Ten Commandments. He would also give him very specific instructions about how to build the tabernacle, uh, what kind of garments the priests were to wear, how they were to go about their functions. And then we have this statement coming from Exodus chapter 27 and verse 21. And on the surface, it may not seem like much, but I want us to think about the words we find here. Exodus 27 and verse 21 says, In the tent of meeting, outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall keep it in order from evening to morning. Before the Lord, it is to be a perpetual statute throughout their generations for the sons of Israel. Now, Last week, we talked at great length about the testimony. The tablets of the testimony were in uh, the tabernacle of the testimony. It was put inside the ark of the testimony. That's a big word there, that uh, word testimony. is used repeatedly uh, in the book of Exodus. I want us to pick up on something that's said here in the beginning of Exodus chapter 27 and verse 21, where reference is made to what the Bible calls the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting. Terminology used not just by the New American Standard Bible, but also by King James Version and so many other translations. In the New American Standard Bible, that expression, tent of meeting, is used some 35 times, if I have counted correctly. Think about that. This tabernacle, which was God's dwelling place, is referred to as the tent of meeting some 35 times in the Old Testament. That tells us, I believe, something very important about God's relationship with Israel 
And it illustrates something that I believe is not just very important about our relationship with him, but also very, very comforting. So let's think this evening for just a very few brief moments about the tent of meeting. Exodus 27 verse 20, that one, that passage which we have just read, refers to the tent of meeting, and he says, outside the veil, which is before the testimony, and, and Aaron and his sons are to take care of it, they're to keep it, and he's talking there really about offering sacrifice, they're to keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord, it shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations. In this chapter, God has instructed Moses about things like the bronze altar and the court of the tabernacle in verse 9. For several chapters, God told Moses various things that were to be put inside the tabernacle or the tent of meeting, as well as what the priests were to wear when they went about their work there at the tabernacle. And that work was carried out on a very regular basis, on a daily basis. What does all of this mean? Well, Exodus 29, I believe, answers that question for us. Part of the furnishings of the tent of meeting happened to be an altar where sacrifice was made. Every morning a lamb was offered on the altar in verse 38 through 41 of Exodus chapter 20, uh, 29. I want you to listen as I read the words of um, Exodus 29 verse 42 through 46 and listen carefully and, and see if you can pick up on some things. It shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the doorway of the tent of meeting where the Lord will meet with you. Let me back up and read that again. It shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the doorway of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak with you. I will meet with the sons of Israel, and it shall be consecrated by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar I will also consecrate Aaron and his sons to minister as priests to me. I will dwell among the sons of Israel and will be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord. There are several statements there that really leap off the page in verses 42 to 46 of Exodus chapter 29. God refers to that tent of meeting, and then he says, that's where I will meet with you. He says, I will meet with the sons of Israel. I will consecrate them by my glory, or I'll consecrate that place by my glory. He goes on to say, I will dwell among the sons of Israel. I will be their God. They will know that I am the Lord who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord. The tent of meeting had two rooms, and they're typically called by these names. One was the holy place, and one was the most holy place. Sometimes we refer to that most holy place, the inner court of the tabernacle, as the holy of holies. Inside that uh, innermost place, the holy of holies, you would find the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Testimony, that contained the most holy object in in Israel's possession, those two tablets of the testimony. And that Ark of the Testimony was inside that most holy place. On top of the Ark of the Covenant, there was a, another object. It's called the Mercy Seat. In, in coming weeks, we're going to take a look at the Mercy Seat and, and what that's all about. God says to Moses in Exodus 25 and verse 22, There I will meet with you, from above the mercy seat and from between the two cherubim which are upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about all that I will give you in commandment for the sons of Israel. Now, think about that. This structure, the tabernacle, is called the tent of meeting. Inside the most holy place you have the ark of the covenant wherein you will find the two tablets of stone, the tablets of the testimony, God's message, his covenant with Israel. And on top of that's the mercy seat. And God says in Exodus chapter 29, right here is where I am going to meet with you from above the mercy seat. That's all leading in a very specific direction. And I think it makes a point that ought to be crystal clear from reading those words.
God lives with his people. God dwells among his people. We understand that God's dwelling place is in heaven. We also understand that God is a spirit. John chapter 4 and verse 24 says God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. We also understand that God who is spirit cannot be literally contained in any structure, in any physical building or, or place. While all of that is true, God dwells among his people. That's the whole point of the tent of meeting. That's the whole point of the tabernacle. The tent of meeting is where God dwelt with his people. It is where God met with his people. Hence, it's called the tent of meeting. God had told Moses in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, Let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them. Now, when you go back to the Ten Commandments, you find in verses 3, 4, 5, and 6 of Exodus chapter 20 that God says, you'll, you'll have no other gods before me. Not only that, you're not to make me any graven image. Don't bow down before any graven image. Don't build anything to worship in connection with me. And while that's true, God instructed them to build a sanctuary. What was the whole point of that? Not that God can be confined and maybe there's rich symbolism in this, but God says, this is where I am going to dwell among them. And there were ways in which his presence was manifested from time to time. Yahweh is the God who dwells not only in heaven, but he also dwells among his people. Is that not a powerful statement about God's grace and his relationship to his people? There's some people who have this concept of God that says God is distant, God is far removed, he's not close to us, he can't understand our circumstances. In fact, he's so far remote that we really can't have any contact with him. But that's not the picture that's painted in the Bible. The Bible doesn't paint a picture of God as a God who is remote, as a God who is distant, as a God who is not at all interested in his people. He has this tent of meeting in the Old Testament. He told Israel to make it. And he said, that's where I will meet with you. That is where I will dwell among you. And the reality is that our Father desires to be with us. He desires to be with his people. And I know you might be tempted to ask, well, preacher, that's Old Testament stuff. We don't have that tabernacle any longer. What does that have to do with us? Well, we don't have a tent of meeting like the sons of Israel. And no physical building has any holiness attached to it. Let's not think in those terms. The church is not the building in spite of what some people may think. And this building in which I'm sitting recording this message is in no sense of the word a holy structure. But does that mean that God does not desire fellowship with his people? The night before his death, in John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. If you love me, if you keep my word, I will love you. My Father will love you. Not only that, we'll come and make our abode with you. We'll come and dwell with you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, an inspired apostle is making a very important point by way of encouraging Christians to avoid ungodly influences that would turn us away from Christ. And as a part of that exhortation, he says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? And he says, we're the temple of the living God. Just as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God. And they will be my people. How much comfort does that give to you tonight to, to know that God says to us that we're the temple of the living God. We don't look to any physical building as being the temple of God. We, those who are the children of God, we are the temple of the living God. Just like he said, I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. They will be my people. Here's the point. God is very present with his people. 
And in the next to the last chapter in Scripture, the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation, John said, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell among them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. In the Old Testament, there was that tent of meaning, the tabernacle where God dwelled among his people, where he met with them. Under our covenant with God, God dwells among his people. He lives in his people. He is with his people. His presence is very much a part of our lives, and he desires fellowship with us and to be with us. And when you look at the last book of Scripture as it comes to a close, you have this wonderful assurance that one day we're, we're moving away from this physical place in which we live to a time in which we will be in the eternal presence of God. His tabernacle is among them. He dwells with his people, and we look forward to dwelling ultimately in his perfect presence eternally in heaven. Well, I see that our time is gone for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And as we are about to close with prayer, let me remind you of what we've learned tonight. Never think that God is remote. Never think that he's distant. Never think that he's not a very important and very bold presence in our lives. That's exactly what he is. Bow with me and we'll close with prayer. Father, it is such a great comfort to know that you come and you dwell with your people, that you dwell in your people, and that your presence surrounds us and that you are always near us. That comforts us in our hour of need. That also, Father, reminds us in times in which we're tempted, that you were standing by, that you were watching, that you were there to help, and that we can always rely on your strong arm for assistance. Thank you for the assurances of your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Come back again next week. Until then, may God richly bless you all.